Hello everyone, and today we're taking a virtual field trip to the National Palace Museum. And as we go to the, the National Palace Museum in this virtual field trip, which is in the National Palace Museum, which is in uh, Taipei and Taiwan, we have our guiding here. And when we're first starting off here at the very, very entrance. This is a very stair it's a stairway here at the, at the front gate of the National Palace here Museum in Taiwan. And while we're going here, there's some different ways of getting around. We have this is a map that you can find here. I just clicked on it and go back here to the the, uh, the, uh, the entrance gate and the archway that we first find here. Uh, we first find here. We get, and we go through the going through the museum. You can see some different things. We'll see many many different things, and you can get some different information if you click on this eye. If you go follow the link here, you can go see the, the entrance archway here. The yes, the the Tian the Tian Sha Wei Wei Kong archway. Yes, yes. Yes, going here. Yes, Archway here that we can see here. Yes, yes, yes. At the at entrance of the uh, National Palace Museum. Yes, yes. And taking a look here. You can also see the entrance way here. And there's where the bus would leave you off. And there's a long walkway that will take us up. We're going to go take a look at some of these, a few things here before we jump ahead because this is a short video just to give you an introduction to what they have at the National Palace Museum. There's some very nice, wonderful things. Many, many treasures from from uh, from, uh, from Chinese history and from Chinese culture that are very, very, uh, very amazing and special to see that were part of the, were part of the imperial collection whenever they first brought here, brought to Taiwan um, after, the, after the wars. Um, now, taking a look over here though and going through this we, we can also as we go through and guiding through here there's some videos here about the featured sections that you can follow if you come to the national palace museum website and take this guided tour they can take you to different locations or you can go to different places this is uh, the hua bao avenue right was right, right where we're starting at and then there's the main the, the first floor the second floor third floor and the basement and the garden as well yes yeah, so the garden is a very nice place lovely place to see if you can really see it in person it's even nicer um but we're, today we're just going through this and if you have time maybe you can go through that on your own. If uh, but th this video is going to be rather short, we're just going to look through some of the places in the main building today. Yes. So now taking a look here, you can see these two guardian, these these two guardian lion figures, the bronze lions, which are are guarding the gates here. Yes, that's it. As the outside, these giant, uh, giant bro uh, bronze lions, which are kind of guarding and uh, guardian figures for the for the National Palace Museum that we have here. Yes. Yes, taking a look here, we see those, and moving ahead further. You can see this arrow. When you click on this arrow, the arrow will take you and move you ahead, as, move you ahead and walk you to different locations. Yes, we keep on walking here, walking here down the hall, walking down the the, uh, the outside way through the gardens here, the area near the gardens, I should say. The gardens are often over to this direction over here. If you were actually going to the National Palace Museum, you would take a turn here and go through this passageway here. The gardens are back over there. Yes, very nice, wonderful place to go. And you can see with the outside Side, you can see the, the the architecture of the of the buildings, and you can also see the very very nice land, the beautiful landscaping that is all around here. Yes, it's a beautiful sunny day here that they have very often here in Taiwan. Yes, and the weather. And over here we have this going up to the first floor terrace here. When we get up to the first floor terrace, we have a very very important kind of traditional Chinese skull, uh, not sculpture, well kind of a sculpture, a cast. Yes, a cast of a square ding cauldron, a square ding cauldron, which was com to commemorate the the the, uh, this, the, the finishing up of, of the of the National Palace Museum as it's being set up as it was set up back in yes in 1992 yes it was cast in 1992 by the Museum of Technology Office yes yes as a, as a memorial thing with these very very especially commemorates the, the the bronze castings that they have here now we're going to go a little bit further up the stairs and we're going to see the bronze castings very 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 quickly here get some, some of the bronze castings that we have here at the National Palace Museum, which has so much of uh, so many relics and pieces of, and, and of antiquity and anti and, uh, and, and Chinese culture that are on display here for us for us to see. Going up here. Going up to the top floor here and taking a look here. And you can see the view here once we get to the top. You can see this is a very, very far view from a long walk to get all the way up here to the top to the entranceway of the National Palace. Well, I just clicked it to me all the way back down here. And I click this over here, go back up here. And getting all the way to the top up here, up here, up here, the first floor terrace. Yes, the entranceway to the Natu National Palace Museum. We're going to go in this way. If you click on the arrows, it'll take you inside this way. Now, we're going to jump. Well, I'll come in here. We'll go inside the very first. Front, front entrance here and this is the first entrance where you have to go inside and go through and get tickets and then you can go up the stairs but now I'm just going to jump and click over here to the main
building third floor. We're going to click on this here because time is short. And we're going to go and see, yes, the gathering treasures in the National Palace Museum, taking a look at these traditional these treasures that we have here. And these are some of the most important treasures that we can see here in the National Palace Museum. Like there's a piece of the, the a sculpture of the meat. Yes, 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 of a, 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 a stone sculpture of meat. That is, a, it's a stone, it's a mineral, it's like a mineral that's been carved. It looks like meat, but it's actually, I know this is here, the jade cabbage first. And another very important sculpture they have is the jade cabbage, which is a, a piece of jade, and jade is very finely carved. And one of the oldest things that have been carved in, by, in human history for, for from antiquity, about 6,000, 6, 8,000 years ago, that they found they found some of these jade bee car, or kong stones, which were carved in, China, in ancient China many, many thousands of years ago. And this is an example of one that was done more recently, about two, about 200 years ago, but it's still a very, very important piece. He has a very important from the Qing Dynasty, from the Qing Dynasty, the Jade, the Jade Cabbage, which is probably one of its most famous pieces that is, how, that, that is housed and, tre and treasured here at the National Palace Museum. Also, over if you click on this, is the meat-shaped stone, which was carved around the same time, which is a stone, and it's been carved and, and, and polished and refined to look like a piece of meat. So it looks like a piece of, it's like a slice of pork, actually. Yes, that you might find here, um, here in, in, in the common dishes that you might find here in, in Taiwan and, and in China and other other East Asian countries, um, and you can find this here. And it has this, this, this golden, as this gold, served on served on this golden platter as a plinth to to to, to set it off. Yes, yeah, so you can see as it as it's a decoration for this very small but very very beautiful. Um, Artwork. Yes, you can see very close. You get a close up here. Looking, you can move closer into to get a good close look here to see actually see a good close up view. If you come and use the website to take a look here, and also you can see the jade cabbage. If you click over here, over here, go to the side, go ahead, turn around. Yeah, little one here. Yes, a little, a little closer here to the jade cabbage. Hello. Yes, turning, turning, turning. Gives you different angles whenever you come to here. Yes, this one which is probably the closest view. You can see the actual view of the jade cabbage, and you can click on this, the, the, the zoom in to take a closer view. And this we can zoom out. This is already a, the closest you could possibly see. Yes, so that's why it's good something to click on the information to get a better view if you'd like to get a clearer view. Now we're going to go over to here to the 306 room, room 306 here, and the entrance way. And we go over here to the room 306 over here. Yes, this is the entrance way. There's some pieces, very ancient pieces from Chinese Chinese history. Looking at the jade, uh, the bee, this, this jade kong over here. Yes, the jade bee. And there's lots of car examples of carved jade that we have here. And carved jade is one of the most precious things that they have in, in Chinese history. Yes, quest for yes, different kind of different Chinese artifacts here. And this is a jade, a jade bee, bee stone, which was carved many, many thousands of years ago. That we have examples. That we have an example of here. Yes. And there's an example of the history here from falling along the Yangtze River. Yes, 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 and the, the Yangtze River and the Yellow River. Yes, where they're kind of the reaches here. You can see where they, where these things were found in different locations. I have a map here. All throughout different places along the river and the cultures that developed along the Yangtze and the Yellow River in mainland China. Yes, in the mainland China. Hmm. And they see one of the very, very earliest axes and hatches, which were, which were also carved from stone before there was bronze and metal casting. During, this is like the most advanced, like during the late Neolithic age. These are some of the most advanced stone, um, uh, sto uh, stone, web, uh, stone, uh, stone made um, items that you can find there from this from this time period that are very 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 old and very ancient and, and these ancient relics that are found from these pieces of jade that we have left not from the wood because the wood is something that would not be preserved but this, the jade stones were fortunately were preserved from about six thousand uh, six thousand years to about two thousand years BCE so so that's we're already about two thousand years past. BCE. So now this is going back about eight thousand years ago. These are some very old artifacts that we have here from a very ancient times or a very ancient culture that was actually very advanced, even especially for very much more advanced than most other cultures at that time. At a time, especially during something the, time, this the Neolithic age or the Stone Age, and these stone items were very, very, very advanced because they were using a stone that was very hard and carved in a very, very smooth and very meticulous way and very well done, extremely finely done. And they're still so they're still well they're, they're so well done they're still preserved today. Yeah. As you can see, others these some of these jade B cog stones here, and here's a little video about the jade B uh, jade B disc. Yes, you're going to have a little video here about the jade B discs.
in the coastal zones. In the Neolithic times, Chinese believed that praying to gods of heaven and earth was necessary for receiving blessings. Particularly, Chinese liked to communicate with God through jade, because jade were always considered to have supernatural powers at that time. When ancient Chinese played to the god of heaven, they used the wrong shaped jade object. At that time, the philosophy was artifacts imitating nature. Chinese figure out the shape of heaven resembles the shape of disk by observing sunrise and sunset. No doubt, this object was dedicated to the god of heaven by Liangzhu people. The most interesting thing was the very blur mark on the upper right side. It seemed to depict a bird standing on the top of altar and the other bird inside the altar. Birds were believed being capable to fly high to close to the heaven, and thus became messengers of God. Together, this jade disc was used for dedicating to and communicating with the God of Heaven. Now, there's a little explanation about the jade bee disc from this from the Liangzhu culture here that you can see as well. Yes, yes, in very early early times in China here, and you can see some of the other bla the, the the axe blades and such. And there's another piece that we have right down here to take a look is a jade cog, which was a little bit earlier. Yes, the jade cog from about 2000. Yes, a little bit later, 2000, uh, 2500, 2000 BCE. This is a jade cog stone. Yes, yes, it's a it's a kind of long. Uh, for, uh, a uh, rectangular shape, um, yes, prism, a rectangular prism that's been carved, yes, of, of jade. It has these, it has these very, very uh, interesting notch marks. It goes all the way down and through the jade cock stone uh, uh, that, that was found from, from this Liangzhu, from the Liangzhu culture here. And we have other pieces as well here, taking a look. There's many other pieces here as well that, that we can see more jade cog stones as well and other a very important piece right here is a jade pig dragon from the Hongshan, the Hongshan culture. Yes, this is a pendant that was like you see where the string possibly went here through this jade bead pieces where this with this kind of pig and dragon piece at the end here. Yes, yes, it's, it's about seven point eight uh, centimeters to five point six centimeters. Five point six six five centimeters and a thickness of two point two and a half uh, centimeters or so. Yes, yes. From the Hongshan culture found in the north northeastern area of China. Yes, northeastern area of China. Yes, and there are other pieces as well. It's another very key historical piece that you can see as well. Yes, and there's other pieces as well, some other jade pieces we can see as well. And taking a look a little bit, we're just going to jump over here to take a look here. At this piece over here, we have the, yes, the Shang, yes, yes, some piece from the Shang dynasty, some Phoenix crown with the dragon, yes, yes, another piece of carved jade that we can see here as well in the display here. There's only many pieces of carved jade that are, that are on display here at the museum, at the museum. So we're going to move around here, and I'm going to move over to here. Yes, because it goes like in a line. Whenever you follow the map to let you know inside here, as the pictures go, you can follow one line down and around, one line down and around. But it's very hard to cross from one side to the other as you look at the picture. So if you want to, when you're looking at the wall or looking at the displays, it's good to go and click in front of the display you'd like to see. You'd like to see a little piece of advice over here. Yes, and looking on here, we have some more pieces here uh, from the jade pieces as well. Where, uh, jump me over to the bronzes we click over here yes over here yes yes and we're on the other side over here yes and here's some of these more jade b discs yes you're probably jade b discs as well more jade b discs as well it's a little bit sensitive but it's a very nice and very well done compared to most museums you see and there's more more advanced jade beads that were carved at later times so you can see they're more detailed in pattern they're much smaller in their disc forming and shape yes the jade b jade b stones and there's many other many other pieces here that are also done in carved jade here as well as the national palace museum in this hall of jade and it goes which goes back to very very deep history now we're going to go a little bit further down this way and go out of the jade area because there's there are many 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 pieces on display for especially for a virtual tour which is 
extremely nice and wonderful. The National Palace Museum has such a, a phenomenal collection of all of these pieces. And these very fine pieces. I wish you could go zoom in a little closer to get the detail of that one right there, but you can as well. But yeah, there's a magnifying glass to see the very, very fine details of many, many of these pieces that you can see very clearly and have a lot, and they have many pieces with a lot of information. There's a little map here that they have here on the wall talking about different locations where, see it's very sensitive. <laughs> Where you can find and see, where you can find and see different places where you can find and see, um, and you can find jade, and where jade is found in different locations. Different locations going down here, down here again, going down here again. Throughout the world, this nice, this nice map they have on display in the hall of jade, of jade. And jade is, I wanted to start with the jade because the jade is probably the most historical and most historical significance to Chinese culture and in China, and Ch and Chinese culture representation that you find it goes back many, many thousands of years. Now, another thing of Chinese culture representation, which we already saw was that, 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 that ding, yes, that big square ding. And we're going to take a look over here. We're going to skip, we're going to take a look and looking here at something that's also rather familiar. These are bronze castings from the Zhou culture. It's just something very, very traditional here. Some of the earliest cast bronze is an amazing feat that was done first by the Chinese, as, as far as we, as far as we know, uh, um, on historical record. And cast bronze was something that was lost in Western culture until relatively recently, until about the, I believe, the 18th, 19th century, when we first be, be, began the technology to even cast bronze. Well, they casted bronze many thousands of years before, about 4,000 years previously. Yes, and this is a Mao Gong, a Mao Gong Ding from the. Yes, this is a more recent one from the late Western Zhou dynasties. From about on the 9th century to 771 BCE, BCE, yes, yes, that's ACA, yes, the contemporary, so 771, which is dated to there. This is a, 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 a traditional bronze cast, which has writing inside of it as well, yes, which is one of the yeah, more, more traditional uh, and one of the most important, one of these very important uh, pieces and, and, and bronzes that we have here on, on display here at the National Palace Museum. And it's sensitive. It's sensitive, but this is nice. It's a wonderful display. Yes, yeah, good. And we have the other piece here that I'm looking for. Here is the bell. Yes, yes, yes. The the, the Zhong Zhou Zhong. Yes, from the West, Western Zhou, Zhou Dynasty as well. Another one with a Tautia that you might see here. This Tautia, which is a very common form from the Zhou Dynasty. Yes, that we can find here on some of these carved. Yes, the, the dragon motif. Yes, yes, yes. The Tautia dragon motif that we can see on these on these pieces that we have on display here at the National Palace Museum. I don't want to, I wish I could, that's the only thing, I wish I could get this map to like completely close. That's the only thing, because you click in that corner and it'll take you away very quickly. But it's a very, very, very wonderful artworks to see here that I always enjoy seeing. Yes, I just want to share with more people and I could share with my students as well. Now taking a look here with our, yes, looking here and going into the bronze collection. And there's many, many bronze castings that we have here from many different eras. Because bronze casting really started not, no, so it was more perfected with what they say back then with the Zhou, with the Zhou dynasty, but it was more, it was done and developed during the Shang dynasty, if I remember correctly, Sha and Shang. Yes, during these early dynasties as well. Yes, we hear from the later Shang. You can see these very early. Yes, this is the the Lei, 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 uh, I forget the Li wine vessel and the sheep's sheep's head high relief with knob pattern. Yes, from the late Shang dynasty. Yes, you can see this one was a very very strong pattern. Different animal patterns and animal motifs that you see on it during the Shang Shang dynasty. That kind of eventually gradually developed into the the Tautia that we'll see later. Yes, that we'll see on later pieces as well. And they're early and then. During this time, they started to move away from making jade jade tools, and, and this was ca casting in stone, yeah, or casting in bronze, bronze, and, and, and carving in in stone, and started and started casting more and using metal. Yes, in this very very early ages of, of metal, yes, metal during these times. Yes, you can see examples of weapons. You see these cauldrons as well. Yes, and other and other. Yes, wine vessels that were used during during these times. Yes, yes. Here's another one we can see. Good. Good example here of this lay wine vessel. Yeah, it's a lay wine vessel. It's again, yes, over here is a ding. Yes, this one. Let's take a look here. Yes, and more shang. Yeah, uh, shang. This is a Han Dynasty. Yes, yes. Uh, back of a mirror that was to, that was cast. Yes, during the Han Dynasty, a later period. Yes, after yes, after the Qing. 
Yes. Looking here as well, some other pieces, small pieces as well, some other small pieces. And I want to move on here. Let's move on because there's many, many pieces to see. I want to go and move over to here, this area of the museum. And we get a sense of the area of the museum as we move through. There's so much to see, especially in a short amount of time. There's there's the, that tautia here on the wall. And we can see some examples here of some pieces that are very important pieces is taking another pieces. We can see this idea of the Tautia here from the Zhou dynasty with the eyes and the whole piece has the whole the whole the whole cast cast uh, vessel has these different kinds of motifs and designs that are inlaid and and, 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 and carved in and then into the form and then whenever it's going cast as with with, with with be a lost wax casting, which is something that they developed way before the West ever did. Has some other pieces as well here. There's an interesting one there, as well as a nice story. Some of these have very, very interesting stories behind it. Here's a nice kettle we can see here as well uh, from the uh, Western Zhou Dynasty. Yes, yes, yes. We can see here from the Western Zhou Dynasty. You can see here as well. Kind of, kind of a bit of a teapot. There's an animal mask we can see. And looking over here, this piece. I really want to get a little video here about the bronze casting as well. So let's take a look here and watch this video. Yes, about the Gui. Yes, there's a Gui food container with twin dragon pattern. Yes, yes. yes. Welcome to the Bronze Gallery. We are looking at a handsome bronze vessel called the Gui. It is about the shape and size of a large ball with a lid and two curved handles. Around 3,000 years ago in the early Western Zhou Dynasty, it was used to offer food to the spirits of the deceased in ritual feasting. What attracted our eyes first are the protrusions on the lid. One set is conical with a pointed end, while the other is cylindrical with a flat top. You might wonder what they are. In fact, they are the horns of two dragons. When the lid fits the vessel precisely, that means the central line on the lid align with the two handles. You'll be surprised to find these two dragons crawling down across the vessel, just as the diagram shows here. This pattern of rotational symmetry undoubtedly is a clever design. There are some greenish spots on the surface of the vessel. Instead of being painted with the pigments, there are actually layers of incrustation as a result of oxidation over a long period of time. When this food container was newly made, it was as shiny as gold. However, as it aged, it has turned into the dark colors that we see today. So when you walk around in the bronze gallery, why not imagine yourself are surrounded by works of art in glittering gold? Yes, bronze is yes, bronze is something that that as whenever it's cast, it has a very shiny golden color to it. But as it hits the air and, uh, and it, as it's in the air, it oxidizes and it gets it darkens over time. And what we see now is the result of these very dark green colors. Yes, these are dark green, green colors and very dark like brownish to black colors as a result of oxidization and the the effect of, of bronze bronze being exposed to the environment such a for an such extensive period of time. See, I can't go over there right now, but I can click this way, take a look here getting some more information. You can see some more information here about the, the wine vessels of the Zhou dynasty. <laughs> yes, I'm looking over here. We're going to go out this way now. Yes, moving this way, going past. Well, I want to take a look down. Yes, going this way. Yes, going through here, there's a few other pieces we can get a, get a, get a glimpse of here. Yes, there's a helmet we can see as well uh, that maybe a guard used to wear, would wear. Yes, during these times, there's, there's a example of some knives and some information as well. Some some square dings, yes, very small square dings that were used as eating pots that many people, that were more, that were commonly used um, back then, early hot pots uh, that, we, that, we, that we have. And here's a, a nice example of a square gui. Yes, they're kind of used here. You can see the, the tautia form and the shape here. Yes, 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 yes. From the Zhou Dynasty. Yes, yes. In the container of Yacho, square container of Yacho. Yes, the late Shang, uh, uh, early Western Zhou Dynasty. Yes, as well. Another piece as well. And we're going to go out this way now. And there's many, many pieces to see here. Yes, as we go out, we're going to go, and I'm going to click over here now. Though this is on the first, we're on the third floor now. We're going to go to the second floor now. I'm going to take a look now at ceramics. Another thing that is very famous in China is the pottery and the ceramics. Many, many famous pieces that you find here in this hallway of some of the most famous pieces we have here. Let's take a look here. We have an example. Here's the sculpture, yes, of 
this palace that we have here as well. That was done in ceramics. Very, very interesting uh, piece in ceramics, which is not not, not common to make such a such a full full body of, of because of the nature of clay, the way it's fired and, and the brittleness of to have something that's sur surrounded uh, that survived that survived this long in in ceramics. Yes, yes, a very important piece is here very large piece here this very nice piece to see here and I, I've always enjoyed it. and some other small piece, ceramic pieces here you might see as well this small piece which is a very old wine pitcher yes from the Neolithic yeah uh, they coined out the culture the gray pitcher yes from about 4,300 to 2,500 BC e which is about very 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 old about 6,000 yes 6,000 years ago yes very old piece yes very very old piece yes as it is a, as a, as a the earliest uh, examples of, of, of pottery that we have here, that we have here from human history, from, from Neolithic times, very, very old. Yes, and it has a certain uh, yes, percent of aluminum oxide. And the clay was very, very well mixed and, and, and whenever it was fired and, and it's firing as well. And there's other pieces here. Another piece we have here is this. Take a look here. Yes, a black uh, a black uh, Neolithic longshan. Yes, this, this long uh, gray, yes, go ahead. yes, yes, it's on the stem cup. Yes, stem cup, as we're saying here. Yes, it is. Yes, as well. Yes, and looking here, we have other pieces of pottery as well. Another very key important piece are these Tang figures. Yes, this figure from the Tang Dynasty as well. Another important piece, and this one here, a video. Take a look at this one. Another very, very key important piece here that we have here. Yes, from uh, from yeah, from the Tang Dynasty. Standing Lee was painted colors here. It's another sculpture that was done of this figurine of this woman here. Yeah, it's in clay, and you can see how the 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 glaze and what it was painted with has worn off quite a bit over time. It's one of these things that they took with a as a grave item with them as a memorial kind of memento, memento mori token. Yes, um, a memory and death. Yes, it has painted in colors from the Tang Dynasty and there are some others as well. We have a nice little video here about the Tang Dynasty horses. Yes, 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 that we can see here as well. In front of you is the famous Sanzhai pottery figurine from the Tang Dynasty. A young lady is wearing a fashionable short sleeve over vest, likely imported from Persia. She is sitting on a foreign breed horse in a colorful saddle. Her body turns slightly to the right while looking down. One hand grabs onto the strap while the other extends out. Likely once held a long wooden mallet to strike the ball. From these, we know she's playing a mounted ball game similar to the polo game we know today. Chinese polo was in fact the most popular sport during Tang Dynasty, where many of the emperors were active players themselves and became an important leisure activity of the upper class, including the court ladies. The word San Cai literally means tricolor, having amber, green, and cream white as the three primary colors. It's a lead-based, low-fire glazing earthenware that gives an exuberant effect after firing, gained popularity and fame during the Tang Dynasty, reflecting the artistic taste of the time. Tang San Cai are also highly associated with tomb figures, giving its high burial culture, which also reflects the lives of the living. This ceramic artifact is not only a work of art, but also gives us a glimpse over the Golden Age of China. Yes, these Tang Dynasty figurines that were done in ceramic during the very high age, high age of China, Chinese Chinese culture and influence. Yes, and we have other pieces as well here. There are other, for example, more traditional pieces. A celadon. Yes, I finally find celadon during the five dynasty. You are aware? Yes, a celadon bowl that we see here, very finely done. Yes, yes, you can see here as well. Yes, yes. For those who like to throw uh, in ceramics. Yes, and there are other things as well. We're going to take a look over here now. And this is the Hall of Ceramics, the Hall of Pottery. And we can see some different kinds of ceramics and pottery as well. As we look down here, there's many different pieces. And we have a short little video here. You have an idea, uh, Adventures in the Natural of the Formosan Odyssey. Let's take a look here, a short video here. No, oh, not this one, sorry. This is another video here, example. Not not that one right now. Yes, just kind of get some pieces here. That we might see here, for example, yes, another sculpture here from the Northern Ding from the Song Dynasty of this child who's laying down here. Yes, another ceramic pieces as well, so many ceramic pieces. And these are done with a very, very frank, more like a, like a celadon whiteware kind of glaze as well. Many other pieces of, of pottery and ceramics as well we can see here as well. Many, many pieces. With many, many, many pieces. Yes, these very fine sealed on wares here as well. Let's take a look here. Yes, 
It was a blue green, a blue, a bluish green glaze. Uh, it looks like I would classify it as a celadon. I don't know if it is a celadon. It looks like one, it's, but I'm not sure. You know, and there's uh, um, I, I, I will have enough information to give you a, a, full, a full information on on the, the the chemistry of it to know whether or not it's technically a celadon. Looks like one though. All right. And the narcissus basin, yes, this was blue green. Kind of a it's a, a face washing basin that you would use to clean yourself. Yes, to clean yourself with. Yes, and there are many other pieces. So many, yes, many, many, many pieces to take a look here in the air in this area and to take a look on display. We're going to move over here. Yes, we're going to move a little bit further over here to the other side, and you see another very nice vase here, vase, and some other yes, other pieces as well. Take a look here in the hall of ceramics, and so very. Very, very well, very finely done. Yes, gla glazes as well. Yes, glazed casted pieces, and we have some sculpture. Very finely done piece right here that we have this this this, this vase that's been that's been uh, that's been glazed from the Qing Dynasty. The more detailed and ornament or ornamented uh, ceramic pieces are are more more Qing. Uh, the the definition and, and defining and, and the the technology and the, the technique of, of, of creating and, and, and high firing glazes with with with, with such, such exuberant colors uh, is something that's developed a little bit later um, in time but you can see some very ex excellent examples over here here at the National Palace Museum of many different amazing styles of glazing and works that are done during different times as well I wish we get a little bit closer to get perfect information on, you, on each one of these pieces here but it's kind of hard to read uh, the the the, the uh, perfect definition. And there's the examples of, of traditional blue and white ware, which was something that was important to the West as well. Yes, as, as something that's very, very popular came from China and made China very internationally famous. Those different blue and white wares that we see over here, something I've always enjoyed and liked in style. Yes, uh, in style. Uh, and there's many different kinds of here. here yes, yes. Almost yes, wedge wood, which was kind of influenced by the Chinese uh, production here as well. Yes, you can see another red, a red vase here, another cast, red, very beautiful, very beautiful, um, not cast, we want cast these, uh, ceramic vase. Um, okay, yes. mm -hmm. And taking a look back over here, as we move through this area of the National Palace Museum. All right, so now take a look here at this last one here. Yes, you can see this, this green. Yes, the flower shaped Qing Dynasty, a uh, green, uh, green, green ground. Yes, Qing, uh, Qing Dynasty. Yes, uh, the Guan Shu, the Guan Shu raid. Yes, flower shaped vase with fish, and it's very, very beautiful vase you can see here with the dragon and the, how it's been cast. There's a fish in there as well, as it's been fired and I can't say cast. I mean fired these fired ceramic wares. Yes, yes, because well, yeah, whenever you produce ceramics, you make something out of clay, you dry it out, you fire it in a kiln take it out you glaze it again then you fire it refire it one more time again and then you can refire and add glaze and then sometimes you fire at low levels and then you fire at high levels to add different kinds of glaze to the pieces to give them more detail yes and you can see these very 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 intricate designs which we've added to these pieces and very intricate glazing as well and there's the name of the piece yes yes yeah, yeah the name of, of the artist who created this and the piece as well yes for the dragon's gate here yes a dragon on the green grounds. Yes, yes, yes. What's a fish? Yes, beautiful piece. Very, very beautiful piece found here at the National Palace Museum. And wonderful treasures of history, of, yes, of human, of human history. Now, taking a look here and going out. We're going to go down now. I'm going to click over here. We're going to go down now to the last floor and to the first and to the back down to the first floor. Almost on our way out. When we go down to here, we're going to go and take a look here at the splendors of Qing furniture yes 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 and kind of moving on here to the the, the, the precious treasures of of the of the the material of the of the of the king's of the king's treasures here yes garland of treasures yes the garland of treasures yes yes a masterpiece of craft and museum's collection yes this is no exist this piece is on display here as well very beautiful carving that was done and well these were all done within the imperial in the, the imperial collection of the of the of the, of the, yes of the uh, of the museum here yes yes it's a little area thing is a little bit annoying okay but now taking a look, please stop okay yes taking a look here at some of these pieces as well 
that we can see. Yes, we can see here many of these pieces from the traditional collection. There's ceramics there, and there's also lacquerware pieces that were that were also uh, kept here. Your lacquerware is whenever you make something out of wood and you paint it over and over again with lacquer to give it kind of good, good covering, uh, covering as well as these lacquerware pieces and many many pieces here. Kind of going here, taking a look a little bit further. I want to go over to here. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's, there's. The, they, this is a, a pair of pocketry watches which were, which were donated and given. These were not made in China. Yes. Yes. They were brought to China during the Ming and Qing eras. Yes. But they have them here as these examples of po pocket watches were done from the 17th, uh, seven, uh, 18th and, and uh, 19th centuries as well. And another piece that's very close by to here. We have that. Yes. Example of the coral here, and our, I think around the corner from the coral is this one over here. Take a look here. Yes, it's a dragon blossom. Yes, another, yes, 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 dragon blossom. altar pieces. This is an altar piece that was done with, with a, let's say, a kind of a vase, with a vase shape, with a, with an offering of kind of getting an idea of the incense being offered up from the vase. Yes, and these, 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 these ceramic crackleware. Um, yes, yes, very fine crack. It look like crackleware, but actually it's way the glaze is in, inlaid inside of it. Yes, very, very, very fine, very fine altarware pieces. Yes, for these Chinese small gui style pieces. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Take a look over here. This one. This is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm looking for. Yes, the ivory balls of nested concentric layers of human figures. Yes, yes, yes. Open work relief. Yes, from the second half of the 19th century. This is a very, very beautiful, detailed piece. It's a kind of a hanging, a hanging piece that you can find so much inlaid detail carved into this of different figurines that are moving there's so much movement there's so much detail that is done in this piece it's very very beautiful now it's done in ivory which is a rather contra controversial um a controversial kind of thing because of where, because of where it comes from um but it's a very very beautiful carving that was done in ivory and it has such great fine detail that is a national treasure i don't recommend using ivory now in any way shape or form to create any new artworks but this old piece that was done in, when ivory was done in more was more abundant and was done without people really understanding what they were doing as much um should still be appreciated and not necessarily um not not not, not disregarded in any way it was a very very beautiful beautiful piece of artwork that we have on display at the national palace that they have on display at the national palace museum so that's pretty much Everything that you can see at the National, there's more of these pieces as well from the Imperial Collection. You can also look over here in 108. If you go around, you can see some furniture from the late Qing Dynasty as well. You can see how the the wares that people would have inside of a, 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 a rather common home, but this is probably a little bit more, a little bit higher level than most people um, that were found in the Imperial Collection. Um, so it's rather Imperial Collection is probably a little bit better, is the better stuff, but they're still they're still well preserved here that we have uh, from the 19th uh, from the 19th century and also. Over over here if you'd like to go and check it out here there is a section on buddhism as well if you'd like to see different things on, on, on display from different buddhist artworks very famous buddhist artworks from from china they're on display here in this location an example of a buddha right there it keeps on popping oh my gosh to me about the entrance just a little example here of some of the buddhist pieces oh like oh please thank you there's some pagodas yes a pagoda there as well and an example of a buddha here as well as some other deities okay just get an idea about that so i'm gonna go now this keeps on oh, making me a little bit crazy and we can go and up here and i'm gonna go out to the zishan garden here right before we go so get a little idea about the zishan garden here and the wind pavilion and this is this nice the pine wind pavilion you can see here and it overlooks this hot this garden that you can go off and explore and see the different locations all over this area here, which is an outdoor garden, which is also wonderful to walk around on a nice on a nice day if you get a chance to go to Taipei. Uh, if not, you can come take this vir virtual tour and get a, get a very good sense of the of the pavilion, which is here, and seeing the fish and the wonderful ponds here. And it's a beautiful garden that we have here. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this and it's, I found it informative. I'll see you later. Bye bye.